Hello photographers, my name is Spiros Heniatis and this is where I answer your photography questions and we learn about photography together. This is part six in our series on composition and this week we're looking at textures as one of the building blocks of composition. And texture is the surface quality of an object and this includes how it looks and how it actually feels to the touch. And texture, like our other building blocks, can be used to break the brain out of its regular processing patterns which forces it to work harder to understand what it's actually seeing. Texture typically shows up as a pattern, a repetition of details that we don't normally see. For instance, in this photo right here, we can see a couple of different textures. First, we have the larger texture of the brick wall itself and the eroded mortar, which leaves surface gaps between those bricks. We can see and imagine this texture because of the shape, the color, and the brightness of the bricks against the darker shadowed areas of the eroded grout. In addition to the larger wall texture, we have the surface texture of the brick themselves, which look rather smooth where they're exposed, but they take on a rougher texture where you can see the stucco that's still clinging to them. Again, it's the contrast that we see between the light and the dark areas that shows us that there's a variation in the surface. On the stucco, it creates the rough corduroy looking texture. This is really important because it is this contrast that creates texture, that visual information imparts to our brains an understanding that there is a variation to this surface that we're looking at. Once we understand that there is a variation, our brain then sets out to determine how it feels, and this can be incredibly engaging in composition. Take a look at this and see what I mean. Every time I see this photo, I can immediately imagine exactly how it would feel to run my hands over this surface and break off the peeling paint. We've probably all done it before, and because we have that memory, seeing the visual representation allows us to recall the actual feeling. For me, it gets so powerful that I physically feel the urge to reach out and touch the photo as if I could actually run my hands over it and feel the peeling paint. This is an incredibly powerful composition tool because now you've engaged another sense. By bringing in the sense of touch, the brain struggles to reconcile the desire to actually touch this with the understanding that this is not real, that the surface quality of this photo is entirely different from what it visually appears to be. The ability to engage multiple senses in your composition can create stronger engagement with your photo, creating visceral reactions that can have a profound impact on the viewer. Let me show you what I mean. I guarantee you that right now, somebody watching this, possibly you, visibly drew back from the screen in horror, revulsion, and possibly fear. Now, a large part of the reaction is the hind brain's fight or flight reflex kicking in because it recognizes this as a snake and it's sending out flashing danger signals to the brain. That reaction doesn't have as much to do with the texture of the snake as it does with the fact that that was a photo of a snake. However, what I want to point out is that your reaction and your understanding of the texture of this snake and how it would feel to touch this snake will vary based on your reaction to the snake itself. For folks like myself who don't mind snakes and have interacted with them, the idea of texture is very different. I see this and I imagine the smooth, soft, slightly warm and slightly pebbly texture of the bow constrictor, which had been sunning under a heat lamp right before she was brought out to model for me. If you're not so fond of snakes, however, your perception of that texture may be completely different with your brain giving it texture attributes that might include slimy or cold. I wanted to point this out because we all have a certain shared social knowledge. We all recognize what a snake is, but our own personal experiences inform and create nuanced reactions to certain things, including reactions that you may not be able to predict. It's fairly easy to predict that some people may respond to the snake with a measure of feel, while others will not. And you could even imagine some people responding with feelings of warmth and love, such as someone that might have had a snake as a pet. However, the unexpected reactions will be just that, unexpected. And I point this out because it's important to realize that while you can carefully craft and create a composition using all of the tools that we've talked about so far, you can't control the reactions that people will have to it. And this isn't a bad thing. In fact, I think it's a very good thing because eliciting strong emotional reactions through our art is part of why we do this in the first place. And to bring it back to texture, I just want to reiterate that your perception of a texture as you photograph it may not be what another person sees. And that's okay. The important thing is to recognize that texture can be used to engage the other senses and feelings, creating a stronger connection to your photo. 
So if the texture is in the details, let's look at those details. Here we're looking at the peeling paint much closer, and notice the shadows cast by the peeling paint. Those shadows create the texture, and what this means is that the direction of the light is very important to creating texture. Let me show you what I mean. This shot here was lit from directly above, and as you can see, there is not much texture. This is because the light is shining directly onto the subject surface, eliminating most of the shadows that might be created by variations in surface height. Compare that to this, where the only thing changed is the direction the light is coming from. Here, the light is hitting the surface at an angle, and when it comes in at an angle, the difference in surface elevation creates shadows. The high points of the surface block the light from hitting the low points, creating the contrast needed to represent the texture that we see. When you're shooting for texture, the direction of the light is critical, and it's something you will want to be aware of. Now, I want to go back to something I said at the beginning of this video about how texture is a repetition of details that we normally don't see. In the fourth video in this series, Series, we talked about lines, but I also mentioned in that video that our brains are always looking for patterns, and patterns in your photos can help to further engage the brain in your composition. Texture as a repetition of details is another type of pattern that can engage the brain, and what's wonderful about texture is that the pattern or repetition often has a great deal of variation to it, which really helps to engage the brain. Take a look at the paint again. There is a consistency in the fact that the paint is peeling all over the board, but there is a great deal of variation within this pattern. We have large areas with little or no peeling paint, and then we have cluster areas where there is heavy peeling, and then within those areas there is even more variation. Here's another example. Here we have a great deal of very consistent pattern repetition in the bricks, but at the same time we have a great deal of variation. First, the bricks have color variations, and in addition to that, the bricks change direction, creating an independent pattern around the doors and windows. Then we have the patterns broken up entirely by the doors, windows, roof lines, and foliage. And what we're doing here is engaging the brain on several different levels. You see a photo like this, and you know it's a building, and you may even recognize this as a church building. But because of the way this is framed, you can't see the entire building itself. So your brain picture of a building, or perhaps more specifically, your brain picture of a church, doesn't match what you see here in this jumble of oddly stacked shapes. As a result, the brain starts looking for patterns to decipher and understand. It sees the repetition in the bricks and uses that as a foundation of understanding, because here's a repeating pattern, and these are bricks which are assembled into buildings. And while your brain is working through that, it's also imagining the cool, rough feel of the brick wall as if you were running your hand over it. At the same time, it sees that this pattern is interrupted in no particular order, creating more confusion. Here the bricks are interrupted by a vent, there a different pattern in the roof, and then we have these tall skinny windows which don't match the more intricate window on the lower left. On top of that, we have the foliage, which presents a completely different texture against the structure. And if you do recognize this as a church, a variety of feelings may arise in you. Anything from contentment, to indifference, to feelings of skepticism or wariness. As a result, what seems to be a rather simple photo of a building becomes a complex composition, using perspective, shape, lines, texture, and more. The point I want to make here is twofold. First, it's that every element builds upon other elements in your composition. Always, every photo you take uses all of the components that we've been talking about. Even if your focus was on a single component, such as texture, I guarantee you there are still lines, shapes, colors, and more in that composition. Second, and I don't want to beat a dead horse, but I'm going to say it again and I'm going to say it real quick. You don't have to consciously examine and think about every one of these elements as you compose. You just need to be aware of them. All right, that's all I've got for you guys this week. If you have any questions about using texture, in your compositions, let me know down in the comments. And while you're down there, let me know how did you react to that picture of the snake. Now, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. If you really like this video, why don't you do me a favor and share it with your friends. But the most important thing is to get up, get out there, and take some damn photos. I'll see you guys on Friday.